Hey friends, I'm so excited for my conversation with Mike today. It's about uh, letting go of perfect, letting go of perfection. And I don't know about you, but uh, for me, as I was answering my call to ministry, uh, there were times in my life when I thought I'm not qualified to be in ministry because my life isn't perfect. And I know not everybody's called into ministry or, or um, full-time ministry like I am, but whatever you've been called into, uh, maybe at times you have felt like you, you can't do that because your life hasn't been perfect or you have thought to yourself that you're eliminated from certain things because your life isn't perfect. Well, today in my conversation with Mike, we talk about the importance of letting go of this need for everything to be perfect. And we also talk about um, the importance of having people around us who are willing to help us and mentor us and support us especially through seasons that aren't perfect. So I really hope you enjoy our conversation between Mike and myself. So week three, we'll look at this uh, next chapter called Giving Up on Perfect. And uh, the, the theme that I kind of uh, got out of this book was that God uses our painful experiences to become the seed of hope for someone else's miracle. Now, I said last week that I would tell you which one of my favorite chapter is. It's this one. This is my favorite chapter. And you and I have talked a little bit, Mike, but... Um, I have been through a lot of painful experiences in my life, and I'm not going to say that I am. I have experienced the most pain or the deepest pain, but I've experienced some deep pain. Um, I was diagnosed with depression in 2011. I thought I ran away from it. Well, <clears throat> that's the wrong language. I thought I overcame my depression in 2012, only to realize I had just masked it. Masked it. Um, I was ignoring it. And it came back with a vengeance in 2013. And that's when I realized I need to, I need to, like, counseling needs to be a central part of my life. I need to be, have accountability, people that are, hold me accountable. I need to have conversations with people like depression is strong in my life. But <clears throat> depression doesn't have me. I have depression. You mentioned that in your chapter. Like, at the end of the day, because of who God is, I'm in charge of my depression. Um... But you mentioned something in the book um, that it's through those experiences that God can do something special. And God and, and that special being we can speak hope into other people's lives. So can you talk a little bit about that? And then well, I have a follow-up you know, question. One of the you. things I heard so often is uh, you you know, you've you've heard me talk a lot about how Carolyn and I we're in our fiftieth year of marriage right now. And it's a, a, a really good marriage. But at year 20, we almost got divorced. And it's mm -hmm. the same thing. You know, I always challenge you with your own relationship because especially in ministry, and it's really dysfunctional, is we can blame God. You know, well, you were, you're gone night. You know, you weren't too many meetings. You're doing, well, hey, God's called me to do this. Well, that's dysfunctional. So, you know, we got to um, year 19 or whatever, and we were kind of like um, co-parenting and, and so forth, but we were just kind of like parallel in our relationship. And Carolyn said, I don't want our kids growing up seeing this as love. And we really contemplated divorce. And June 1st, 1992, we said, this is year 20. Uh -uh. Our marriage is going to come first. Doesn't matter if we don't feel like we love each other, but we're going to act like, and, uh, God still does resurrections. You know, like I said, we're in our 50th year, August, yeah. we'll be married 50 years. And, um, what sharing that and being open about our struggles, you know, our own struggles and pain, even, even this past week or this past month when I was preaching at Gainsbourg, you know, uh, and, and I was talking about the, the budget as a moral document. Um, I said, hey, let, let, I'm not perfect at this. You know, I love those hundred and some thousand dollar Mercedes sports cars. Um, mm -hmm. So I bought a 2006 for 17000 Did mm -hmm. I need it? No. But I, I share these things. You know, so... In 06, it cost 90 some thousand, but when they're 15 years old, you, you, you see, um, and I love it, you know? Um, <laughs> so I think, oh, and Francis of Assisi, 
is my patron saint. And I read about those mm. dudes and I go, but I think Fernie, as we grow together in community, you know, and, and, and we begin to understand God's unfailing love. I'm not talking about cheap grace, you know, cause when I felt that I knew that it was going to be risky for me to work in door four in a war zone, mm -hmm. because God was calling me to do that. I was willing to do that, you know? So, but, but I think is, is, you know, when we think of perfect, cause I read about all these saints, these, you know, like St. Francis and those kind of people. And I go, or mother Teresa, but even then she said she felt the absence of, of Jesus and God for like 40 years. And she did it anyway. Yeah. Just that is, is a help to people like you and me. You know. Mm. So uh, we've got a church member right now. He was diagnosed with COVID in July. <laughs> Excuse me. Was diagnosed with COVID in July. Um, recovered from that is dealing with long COVID. Uh, last week was in a hunting accident. He fell off a tree, broke a whole bunch of ribs, um, is in the hospital right now and struggling even more because he's still dealing with um, effects from COVID. And he, he told me the other day, he said, I just, I don't, I don't know how much I can take. It's just like one thing after the other, after the other. And, and one thing I realized as I was reading your chapter was um, this idea that when I begin to follow Jesus, life is going to be wow. easy and perfect. It's not, it's not the promise, right? I mean, we're, it's, we're still going to experience struggles and pain. Like the life is not going to be perfect just because we say to Jesus, okay, Jesus use me to make a miracle in this world. Yeah. And I, you know, what's, I think so important, um, that God reveals God's strength in our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. when you can share with me about depression and, and so forth, um, and I see, wow, God uses you in a big way, but you deal with everyday life done, you know, and yeah. I think that's the greater miracle is, is to see hope in the midst of pain, you know, to experience mm -hmm. grace. And, and the church needs to be that, you know, we're too judgmental is, is that we can uh, demonstrate grace seeing that this is a journey, you know, not an instant, you know, when I was a young Christian, Christian, uh, I saw some pretty immediate changes. Like one was in my academics. But the other thing is mm -hmm. I studied, you know, cause I had this purpose, um, in my life, but I wasn't expecting marriage to be as hard as it was and, and other kind of things. And what I see now is more of what John Wesley called sanctification, you know, in our, in mm -hmm. our Wesleyan heritage is that we're justified by faith, but sanctification is this lifelong journey, you know, and I still have a ways to go at age 70. Yeah. Yeah, we all yeah. do. <laughs> so one of the things um, in the chapter that you mentioned was uh, you talk about Luke chapter one, where the angel tells Mary that she's going to um, give birth to the, the son of God. But then you mentioned uh, in verse 36, he says, your cousin Elizabeth, right? Mentions about Elizabeth and she's also pregnant. And I really found it fascinating when you said that um, God never intended for us to handle life's unexpected turns by ourselves. And you say, uh, Mary is given a mentor and her mentor is her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, can you speak a oh, little I bit about that? It's, it's critical. Who are the people? Um, you know, I just, in this past year, uh, you always want to have people ahead of you, you know, and then you want to be hmm. helping people behind you. And so, uh, my 92 year old mentor, uh, passed this, this year. 
And what he was showing me is, is how to um, age with purpose, grace, marriage, fun. I mean, he was a huge Cincinnati Reds and Ohio State fan, always on mm -hmm. Facebook, encouraging me, uh, guest preaching at different places. And I always said to Carolyn, well, I told him, um, Paul, you're my, you know, at this stage of my life, okay, I'm 70. I need someone that's 20 plus years older than I am to show me that part of the, the journey. So I think mm -hmm. that that mentorship is, is great. And the one thing I think he showed me is get out there and have fun, go to ball games, do all that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I can be too serious. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> I really loved when you talked about um, Elizabeth because during the darkest, most difficult seasons of my life, it's there were people who helped me through that. And, you know, I'll tell you one of the phrases that I hate the most is God never gives us more than we can oh, yeah. handle because I don't think God punishes no. us or tries teaching us stuff by throwing stuff at all. Um, what I do know is that in the darkness, God is present. And one of the ways that we know God is present is through the people who are journeying through that, those difficult times with us. So uh, one of my best friends, his name's Austin. He's a pastor up in uh, West Monroe. He, I remember um, there was this, this one day when I was just, I felt overwhelmed I, and I was sitting out in the alley in, outside my apartment and I was just like, I was just sobbing and Austin just sat there with me and um, he, he didn't say anything. He didn't try to fix anything. He just sat there. And that, I mean, Austin's presence felt like God's presence in that moment. God, the, the miracle that God did through Austin was just the miracle of presence. And um, I, Austin is one of my best friends. I've told him this story a million times. Um, but it, during these difficult times, I hear people say to me sometimes, like, how, how is God even present? Like, do you not see everything that I'm going through? And the answer is yes. God is present here through through me, through your family that's sitting in the hospital room. God is present through the the people who stop and help. Like God is absolutely present in the most darkest times. And for Mary, I wouldn't say it was a dark time, but you mentioned this in, in one of the other chapters we're going to talk about. But uh, and you mentioned it in a previous session, like the the stigmas that Mary probably had to deal with as a, a teenage un uh, unwed. Um, mother, right? I mean, there, there was probably a lot of stuff that people said and, and, and uh, she had to go through a lot and to have Elizabeth there to help her through this, this well, whole and, season. You know, the thing there is the angel just laid all this stuff on her and left. Yeah. So we <laughs> have these visions from God and then where are you, God? And so that's mm. where God's mm. messengers, people, you know, become so important in our life, you know, physical presence, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go tell my fiance I'm pregnant and say, God did it. <laughs> and then you leave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, let me ask you really quickly. Uh, when, as far as, uh, giving up on perfect and everything we talked about, what is one uh, challenge you would give people who are reading or having this conversation with their small groups? Well, I would say in, in what, whatever situation you're in is expectation. Like, you know, for me, mm. uh, marriage, I had an unfair expectation, you know, on, on my wife. Um, mm. uh, I think ju judgment on yourself, you know, can be uh, part of that. Um, so, or even children, like I remember, uh, when we moved my mom from her apartment to assisted living, uh, we were going through her stuff. Now this is four years ago. And mm. so we found a bunch of my like grades, F, D minus all that. She got mad all over again. I said, I said, mom, I'm 66 years old. 
<laughs> Mom, I have my doctorate. I graduated from the University of Cincinnati with honors. I've written almost 20 books, Mom, you see. And so sometimes even like parents, if you have kids that are struggling, don't give up. You know, God's got mm. a big plan for those kids. And I think I think that's that's mm. another thing. Yeah. Mm. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope that maybe you've been challenged uh, to look at your, uh, your own life and evaluate your life and how you expect perfection out of yourself and perfection out of others. And I really hope that you will be challenged uh, in the next week or so to really let go of those expectations. It is a huge burden to, to expect perfection at all times. And so I really hope that this conversation challenged you and helped you and maybe gave you some tools to be able to um, not expect so much uh, out of you and those around you. Well, listen, if you wanna keep uh, diving deeper into this conversation, I wanna invite you to text the word GROW, G-R-O-W, to the number 225-307-0662. Uh, when you text that, you'll get a link back to a home sheet. And when you click on it, you'll, you'll get uh, scriptures that we talked about today, some questions to think about, and a challenge for you to live out this week. Well, I'm so grateful that you joined us. I look forward to next week as Michael and I continue our conversation. And remember, I love you, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'll see you next week.